All right, I have good news and I have bad news. So what do you want first, the good news or the bad news? Bad news? The bad news is that the Cowboys keep winning. <laughs> but, and there's nothing I can do about it. I like anyone except the Cowboys. But uh, the good news is I sent everyone the results for the first exam. And they were exceptional. So I was very happy with the results. Hopefully you were also. Um, I'll call your name. Please come pick up the test. You'll notice next to your numerical grade, which is in the top right corner, you'll notice a, an arrow. And the arrow is either going to point up or it's going to point down or it's going to go side to side. And up means that this grade went up from last time and down means it went down. And then side to side really means like maybe you had a 94 on the first test and now you got a 92. To me, you know, an A is an A. So I didn't want to say like, oh, you went down from like 100 down to a 97. That, that kind of, you know, I don't want to make you feel bad. So, all right, here we go. In, in no particular order here. Um, Anisha, just come grab these. Natasha, Ariel, Christy, Valerie. Can you slide that over to Valerie right there? Tori, no Tori, oh no Tori, there you go, Sarah, Brian, Nathaniel, Justin, Scott, Vincent. It's like the whole table. I don't know how that happened. That's weird. After y'all cheated off each other, you turned it all in at the same time or what? Yeah. Chiquanda. Yeah. Chiquanda. Jesus. Marissa. Sarah. And Alicia, did I get that right? Yeah. All right. So it wasn't right then. How? I mean, what? So, but what? Anna. Okay. Leonardo. Chelsea. Gloria. Jackie. Denise, oh, sorry, Jack. Denise, Victoria, uh, sorry, Veronica. Veronica, Veronica, Leslie, and Matthew. Here you go. All right, I did, I did post the uh, solutions. Did anybody see that? No, no one goes looking around for those things. Somebody please check for me. I did... I think I posted the answers to the, to the exam on our website in Canvas. So what I recommend you do is, you know, go back, take a look at uh, my answers and see, you know, where you may have gone awry. But like I also said, they were real good. What did I say? There was 14 A's. Is that what I sent out? 14 A's on that test. That was real good. Okay, I'm going to pass around a packet of uh, stuff that I've graded. So if you could, please go through this and just take out what's yours, all right? And then pass it around. So go through the whole stack because there's multiple things in here. Any questions?
We good? I I I would say that as far as the graphing is concerned, you've we're past the hardest part of the graphing. Um, we're going to begin today the discussion about inverse functions, which will lead us into the last two types of functions that we're going to learn how to graph in this class, which are exponential and log functions. All right, so we're almost done with our graphing. What you're going to find is, I guess the challenge is going to be this new sort of notation. We're going to see two types of functions that you haven't seen before. And so most people kind of get, I guess, bogged down on, on the new notation, and it makes it confusing. So, you know, we'll see how you do. I'm hoping that we've kind of plateaued as far as difficulty. I'm hoping that's the way it'll be for you. Sometimes people find this new material a little bit harder, but it's not going to be like we're just going to go from you know, what we've done to something just really crazy. All right, so uh, let's go ahead, let's start. We're gonna talk first about inverse functions. And we're gonna need this in the next probably week or two. We're gonna talk about it. We're gonna try and understand what inverse functions are. Once we understand what they are, we're gonna put them away and then we're gonna come back to them later, all right? so. Keep that in mind. It's just uh, something that we'll be referencing as we move on. So inverse functions. Let, let me start motivating this with an example. Uh, recall that when we define functions, we looked at them as like a machine that would change a number into something new, right? So we had something like, over here we called it the domain. Remember this? You take some number and you send it through a function. Let's say it goes through some function and turns out to be something new over here. So let's say two goes through a function gets turned into six. And then let's say that the number three, if you send it through that function, it gets changed to the number nine. I'll give you one more. Let's say five turns into 15. then what is, what do you think the function is? Times three, right? It's basically multiplying your input by three. So I'd look at this function as being the function f of x equals three x, three times whatever I plug in. Would you agree with that? Now three x is a line, isn't it? If I asked you to graph it, it's a line. So I'll just make a little note of that underneath here, or to the side. That's a line. Today, what we're trying to do is we're trying to now come up with another function that would take these answers, and I'm going to put here a question mark because I don't really know what it is yet. I'm trying to find a function that will take it back to where it came from. So it'll take the 6 back to 2, It'll take the 9 and take it back to where? 3, and then the 15 back to 5. What do you think? What function would do that? Would take 6 to 2, 9 to 3, and 15 to 5. Divide by 3, right? I mean, if we multiply by 3 to make it turn into 6, then we would divide to undo that, right? So you, that's where this idea of inverse comes from. It's the idea of undoing something we just did. Okay? So the question mark here, this function, question mark, I know that it's equal to one-third x. That makes sense? But what do I call it? Well, I can't call it f because f is the other function. It's three times x, isn't it? I could call it g, couldn't I? But I want to call it something so that everybody knows it undoes f. 
right? So what kind of a notation could I use to, to let everyone know, hey, that's just not some arbitrary function. That's the function that will undo what f did. So here's the notation we use. We put f, oops, we put f of x, and then right above the f, we put a negative 1. I'm going to highlight it so you can see what I mean. See a little negative 1 up there? Go ahead. Go ahead. See that little negative 1? That negative 1 lets you know that this function undoes f. Whatever f does, this undoes it. With me? And we will call it, when you say that, you say f inverse. Oops, f inverse of x. That's how you'd say that. If you're trying to talk to someone about it, you know, like, okay, that's f inverse of x. As opposed to the one up there in red, this one up here, you would say that's just f of x, right? f of x is 3x. You would say down here, f inverse of x is 1 third x. <clears throat> this okay? All right, let me draw another picture. Here's what's happening. You start out with an x value. It goes through the function f and comes out as 3x, doesn't it? That's what just happened. Whatever we plug in x, we triple it, and it, that's what comes out of it. Then if we take that and send it through the inverse function, you're going to take what? What are you going to do to the 3x? Divide by 3. So I'm going to write it this way. I'm going to take one third of the 3x. Right? That's one third times the 3x. And what is one third times 3x? What happens with the one third and the 3? They cancel and you get x. So look what happens. If you send the value x through f and then through its fun inverse, doesn't it just come out unchanged? Yeah? Right? Goes through the first one, comes out something, and then goes through the second one, its inverse, and comes out exactly what it was before. That's what it means to be an inverse. For two functions to be inverses, they have to undo, undo each other. Now, do you think it will work if I do it the other way around? If I send the x through the inverse first and then through f? Let's try it. Three pictures again. Let's try it with a number. Let's try it with a number first. If I take the number 6 and I send it through the inverse function first, what did our inverse function do? You divided by 3, right? Divide that by 3 and what do you get? 2. Now send that through the original function f and what happens? You triple it. So you get 6. So what happened? It started as 6 and at the end of it, it ended at 6. Let's try it with x. If I take x through here, it's going to come out one third x, right? That's what the inverse does. Then when I send that through f, f triples it. So 3 times one third x. And we get just what? x, right? 3 times one third. They cancel, and you just get the x. So it appears that it doesn't matter which one gets it first. Okay? Do you remember when we did that in the room where I split half the room up and half the room, and I said, okay, we're going to plug something to you, and then you plug that into the other one? That's exactly what's happening here. We have now one side of the room is f, the other side of the room is the inverse. What I know is that if this is f and this is the inverse on the other side of the room, and if I send something through f, then through its inverse, it'll come out unchanged. If I go through the inverse and then through f, it'll come out unchanged. All right? So I'm still working with the same example. I want to look at the graph of these. I want to graph 
the two functions, f of x equals 3x, and then I will also graph its inverse, which is 1 third x. Those are both lines, aren't they? Okay, so let's try and graph these. I'll do my x and y axes here. How would you graph the green one? Okay. Why? How do you graph lines? Did you already do a brain dump of all that? How do you graph a line y equals mx plus b? Where do you start? Dun, dun, dun. Do I have a y-intercept here? That's the same as 3x plus 0, isn't it? So I start at 0 on the y-axis. And then from there, I use the slope. In this case, the slope is what? For my green one. 3. That means I rise over run. Up 3. To the right, 1. Come on, it's in there, right? Somewhere deep into the cracks of your short-term memory. It's in there. That's what happens when the Cowboys win. Everyone forgets everything and it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah, I know. This is too elementary for you now. <clears throat> but that is the line, right? That's, that would be F. Do you all agree? Now, how would you do the red one? It would be, what's the y-intercept of the red one? Zero. Zero. So it, it would start at the same spot, right? But now my rise over run is up one, right three. So one, two, three. So it goes up one to the right three like this. And then I draw it like this. I have to say, it's pretty good drawings today. Hmm? Oh, the vodka. No, no vodka. It's Kahlua today. Wednesday's vodka day. No, wait, Thursday, sorry. Um, okay, now I drew the graphs for a reason. I want you to see something on this graph that's, that's very useful to us in a little while. I just want to look at a couple of points on these graphs. Can somebody tell me what the x and y coordinate are for that dot right, right there that I highlighted yellow? What's the x, what's the y? x is what? One, and y is three. So this is the point one, three. Now, <clears throat> look at this point over here and tell me what it is, the red one. The opposite, 3, 1, right? Coincidence? Yes. Actually, it's not. It turns out that for every point on the green one, if you flip the x and y coordinate over, it will be a point on the red one. And that's the way it will always be for any function and its inverse. So there's another point up here. If we plug 2, let's plug 2 into the green function. Tell me what you get when you plug 2 into the green one. What do you get? Into the green function up there, 3x. No, no, in for x. 6, right? Y'all are making this way harder than it has to be. Plug 2 into the green function, f of 2 is 6, right? That means if I go to the right 2, I would go up 6. So 2, 6 is a, is a point on that graph. I bet you anything that 6, 2, the opposite, the, that flipped over is on the other graph. I bet that 6, 2 is over here. How could you check if 6, 2 is over there? Plug what into the inverse, to the red one? Plug what into the red one? What am I saying should be on the red one? Oh, 
six two. Plug six into the red one, and you should get two to come out, right? <laughs> All right. Now, I'm going to draw something that we've remember that our toolbox of functions. There were like six functions everyone was supposed to know. Like the square root, everyone's supposed to know what that looks like. The x squared, the, the absolute value was like a v. Remember that? One of them was called the identity. And all it was was the diagonal. I just drew the identity right there, dotted black. Okay. Does anyone notice anything about the red and the green graphs? Yep. If you turn your head sideways, you have to kind of... Let me do this without. If you turn your head like this, where the red, the dotted one is like this, then aren't those mirror images? Aren't those mirror images of each other? They're reflections. I'm trying to show you a couple of the properties of inverse functions. Graphically, there's two things you need to know. First, every point on the green function, if you flip the x and y coordinates, it is a point on the red function. Got it? And that when you draw them both together and then you draw the diagonal, they will always be reflections of each other over the diagonal. Those are the two things. All right? So I'm going to write those down. Two properties of a function and its inverse. That lets me know it's recording. I'm plugged in. First thing, every point x, y, on F can be flipped YX, right? Switching the, instead of XY, you flip it X, YX. So if it was 2, 6, you flip it at 6, 2, right? Can be flipped and will B on the inverse function. Now, the power of this we can't see yet because we haven't started the exponential and log functions. But it turns out that for us, we're going to have a function that's going to be very easy to graph. Very easy. And then we're going to be asked to try and graph its inverse. And so to graph its inverse, is very challenging unless you know this. Because if you know this, all you have to do is flip all the points over and graph it. So to graph, all we do is flip points over. Does that make sense, to graph inverses? What's that? All right, what was the second characteristic or property of this? Yes, F and F inverse are reflections over the identity. Sorry, I know that's kind of low on the board, can't do anything about it. They are reflections over the identity. They're not reflections over the x-axis, they're not reflections over the y-axis, they're reflections over that diagonal. <coughs> All right, y'all there? Y'all with me? All right. Now, let's, let's remove ourselves from that example and let's look at something else now. How about this example? What if, <coughs> what if f of x equals x squared. Can you come up with 
its inverse? Good. Square root of x. Right? Because f squares it. Whatever you give it, it squares it. So to undo that, we've got to square root it. But we're going to run into a major problem here, as we're about to see. All right, let's try this. Let's start out with 2. Let's send it through f first. What happens if you send f, uh, 2 through f? What would come out? 4. Four. Y'all okay with that? Now send that through its inverse. Well, what we think its inverse is. What's the square root of 4? 2. Agreed? Agreed with that? Okay, now try negative 2. What's negative 2 squared? 4. What's the square root of 4? Uh-oh. You see what happened there? 2 squared is 4. Square root of 4 is 2. But negative 2 squared is also 4. And so square root of 4 is 2. So we didn't get back to negative 2, did we? So we have a major problem with this. Do y'all see that there's a problem? Okay, so that leads to a question. Right, this right here, you know, what, what the heck? We need to get back to negative 2. Do all functions have an inverse? What do you think? No, they don't. Not all functions have inverses. See, because to have an inverse, I need to be able to complete the loop. It's, it's kind of like this. Let's act if we can for a second. Like this side of the classroom is f and the other side is f inverse. So this, this side of the class is x squared. And then everyone over here is the square root. So I whisper over to this side of the classroom, 2. They send you what number then? Yeah, they send you what? Four. So you spit back two, right? Now I whisper to them, negative two. They send you what? Four. So you have no idea where that four came from, did, do you? You don't know if that four came from two or negative two. So you don't know where to send it back to. So there's, there's a dilemma. There's an easy way, though, for us to check, all right? Very easy way. So here's how we check how to determine if a function has an inverse. And this is the way to do it graphically. Let me draw something here. I'm going to draw the function we were just messing with, x squared. Isn't this x squared? My question is, does that have an inverse? We just said it doesn't, right? Because we don't know like how to undo it. Well, the way we check to see if a function has an inverse, you're going to like this, I think. Do you remember how to check if, if a graph is a function? Does anyone remember how to check if something is a function? Vertical line test. Do you remember vertical line test? Vertical line test said, hey, look, if you come through here and you draw vertical lines, you just, as long as you don't hit the graph more than once, right? So this is a function, right? To do testing to see if it has an inverse, you check the horizontal line test instead. You draw horizontal lines. If your horizontal lines hit it more than once, no inverse. So here's how we would do it. Can't be a problem. That's right. So look, if I draw this, I hit it how many times? Twice. As soon as I hit it twice, horizontal line test. 
And you can see here I hit twice. So therefore it fails. The horizontal line test, therefore no inverse. Now I'm not going to get into the details of horizontal line tests because it's so similar to vertical. It's just that you're drawing horizontal lines instead of vertical ones. So I do the horizontal line test. It hits twice. That means it fails the test. That means there is no inverse for that function. All right. Now there are ways to get around this. I mean, there's ways that you could make this function have an inverse. One way would be to come in here with an 